Here's my question to, to you. I'll start with you, Coach. Do you believe that any of these four can hoist the trophy a week from tonight? <laughs> Do I believe? What do you mean? Do I believe it's going to happen? Yes, you don't. You don't. I'm right, saying. I believe. I'm saying that that anybody has a case here, or do you think this is UConn's to lose? Oh no! I mean, I think UConn's played the best up to this point in time. But again, this has been a a crazy tournament with unbelievable storylines. UConn's a clear cut favorite, and as they should be with what they've done and how they've played, they should be. But now, once we get to Houston, it's anybody's game. It, it really is, and they've got they've got to perform at the level that 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 be performed. And man, I, it, the comeback that Miami had the other night, you know, you look at what Miller did in that game. I mean, he he was at George Mason early in his career. You could see how talented he was and how good of a player he was. But to do to perform the way he did in that game and the comeback that they had and. What a great story for UConn's got to, they, they got to show up. I mean, this is not just, they're going to knock over, you know, and everyone's going to tell them how great they are. And this is yeah. going to be easy and they're going to get there. And this is their national championship. And they're going to put one of those, another, one of those banners and, and floorboards up on the wall in that unbelievable practice facility. Like, no, they, 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 they've got to block all that noise out and stay focused because, yes, do I think that – and everyone knows it. Yeah, they are the favorite, but this is not going to be no cakewalk. I mean, it's, it's not. And they, they've got to – that game versus Miami, they, they've got to perform. They've got to block out all these distractions of, hey, you guys are the national champions. Don't worry. Nobody can beat them. I'll say this. I'll add this to you. I can make I, – I feel like I can make the argument that Miami's had a better run. And what I mean by that is they're four opponents. We got Drake. Indiana and everyone had Drake beating them. Everybody had them. That was the uh, that was the popular upset, and they was they were down, right? So we got J Drake, uh, uh, Drake, Indiana, Houston, and Texas. Yep, yep. Right, and and, and considering they would considering they would pick to be an upset, I can. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, UConn's had a great run, right? But. I wasn't surprised they beat Iona. I wasn't surprised yeah. they beat St. Mary. Now I was surprised at how they what they've done against Arkansas, Arkansas and Gonzaga. Arkansas. That was impressive yeah. to watch. But you can make the argument. So I don't think they're going to show up thinking that this is going to be a cakewalk because I better believe you look across there and, you, and when they are in that film room watching it, that team that I think that that they're playing, I think has a better resume of what they've done. It's equally as impressive. Um, and how they've done it getting to this point right now. And Randolph, the question I then have for you is, what is it about Miami that makes them a different matchup to UConn than what UConn has previously seen in this tournament? I, I think the biggest thing Miami does, and I've been saying this to people all along, is they got so many guys that can attack you off the bounce. There is You can't focus on one or two guys. And, no. and even, even Norchad O'Meara is a center that I've seen them use late in games to come get the ball so he can get fouled and go close games on the free throw line. Like, who teams don't have that. One through five, you're not going to play against a more diversified and skill set of guys that can all score, all do so many different things that's going to make it tough. And they're going to score. Like I said, you, if, you know, you don't want to play this team and, and have to try to keep them to 50 or 60 points. You're not, you just, unless they're just off. <laughs> And we saw them beat Drake, and Isaiah Wong was awful. Mm. He didn't even score. He didn't score much. And then they came back and still won. They just got so many weapons. They got multiple guys to initiate the offense, break. I mean, when you look at the game against Texas, guys, Texas shot 50% from the floor and 40% from three. And they lost. And, and they defended Miami till Miami limited them to two, to two made three-point field goals. If you go into your scouting report, I bet you right now, if Terry was here, Rodney Terry was here, and we said, hey, man, if I tell you right now, you're going to shoot 50% from the field, 40 from line, and hold Miami to two made threes. Yeah. He's probably like, man, we're blowing him out. And you yeah, lose. Yeah. That's how talented that group is. Yeah, great balance, you know, um, through their starting five. Bensley Joseph, you know, he plays 20 minutes a game, but he's a guard that, 
just he's a winner and he's always been that way throughout his entire career. And, you know, th- they don't do anything completely complicated on offense. They're not, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're not trying to, you know, throw a thousand different actions out there and confuse you. They just do what they do and they still get over 80 points a game. I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's the most impressive thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with RC just in terms of that too, for UConn. I mean, they're, they're going to look over and, and look at the tournament run that this team's going to be on and coach Hurley's going to have them focus. No question about it, but, you know, then you look it over at the other side of the bracket and man, I mean, you've got an explosive offensive team and you've got one of the best defensive teams in yes. the country and whose style of play wins out and everyone right. keeps yeah. waiting on FAU to lose. And again, I'm not trying to get on my FAU soapbox. I've talked about them enough, <laughs> you know, going back to November and December when they beat Florida, they kept going on this run. I'm like, watch out for this team, watch out for this team. But you know, what have they done? They just keep responding and everyone counted them out against Tennessee. And it was, Hey, look, playing against North Texas twice, beating North Texas twice has prepared them for this game. They've played against really good defensive this year. And that team is confident and they play with, they, they play like it. They play with a swagger. I mean, Elijah Martin and John L. Davis play with a swagger out there that, you know, I, it, you, you think about it. I mean, FAU had never won a tournament game. Right. Unbelievable. And they're two games away from winning a national championship. And, and if they, they could. do it, they, they could exactly and they could there's <laughs> they no could. question about there's it there's no question neither about one it. of these teams are your typical oh mid mid major teams is coming yeah. they got depth they got guard play and they're going to the bench just like that it's like we talked about with even with UConn you, you if you focus so much on you know Adama Sanoga then Klingon comes in and it's yeah. like there's no drop off they're tag team with you and I think both of those teams do the same thing when they tap out they'll go to their bench it's it's just it's a strength it's not a weakness yeah. And here's the other thing too, RC, like that I think about in terms of this tournament, like, and I know Rob and Jeff and you guys talked about it the other night, like, you know, the best Cinderella story, who went over the best run? Was it George Mason, you know, back in 2006? Was it, you know, VCU going from the first four to the final four? Here's the difference. Those tournaments were different from this tournament. Yes. And is this a historic run for FAU that could change their program? No question about it. I think the only difference is, is they have a legit shot to win it. And I think those other runs mm-hmm. that those teams went on, they didn't have a shot to win it once they got to this point. And this team does. And I think that's what's going to make this Final Four so much fun to watch. I'm actually glad hey. that Miami and UConn is playing each other so that we know one of them will be in the championship game. Yeah. Because if yes. Miami was on one side of the bracket and San Diego State was on another, then we it would be, all right, Miami-UConn would be the betting favorites to go in. and kind of. So now we know one of those guys are going to be there, and I think it's That's great. Right. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play college basketball pick where you can get a little extra sweat during March Madness and win real cash prizes simply by picking player stats in this weekend's games. In Pick'em, all you do is predict whether a player will go higher or lower on underdog's projected totals, whether that's points, rebounds, whatever. For example, if you're like me and you think Zach Eady is going to go nuts in this tournament, pick higher on his points projection, add up to four more picks, and if you hit them all, you can win 20 times your money on a single game. Underdog's slick mobile app is easy enough that dummies like Jeff Goodman have even figured it out. So go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app and use the code FIELD, F-I-E-L-D, and Underdog will match your deposit up to 100 bucks. Now is the time to get in on the madness. So remember, underdogfantasy.com, promo code FIELD. 